To say that I was not looking forward to Madam Web is an understatement. I was never the biggest Spider-Man, Spider-Peoples, Spider-Verse fan. But my best friend in high school was a massive fan until he urinated on his bookshelf in a drunken stupor and destroyed his entire collection. This looked like hot garbage from the moment that first trailer dropped. Nobody was talking about this with anything but dread in their heart. And how could you be excited? The trailer gave us nothing. It doesn't help that this is about a character that 99% of people have never even heard of before. Madam Web, Harley Newer. Sony's only hope is that they spent very little on this movie's production. I went on Valentine's Day because what else am I going to do? Sit at home in my mother's basement? Seems like nobody else had the same idea, as there was only one couple in there with me, and they didn't seem to be too interested in the movie. The acting throughout this film is so flat, it feels almost like a table read at times. You sure you didn't want to take that scene again from the top? No? That's a wrap? Okay. The characters are so one-dimensional, I couldn't describe them any further than the way they look and why their parents are absent. That's it. The shot from the trailer of the three of them in their spider people suits? That's just a premonition. It doesn't even happen in the film. Madame Webb herself is completely baffling. She takes it upon herself to protect three strangers at the expense of any and all around them. Other people getting killed? Don't care as long as these three randos are safe. Madame Webb is no better than a 3 out of 10. There's issues with the plot, the editing, the acting, you name it. If you've ever wanted to watch the same scene three times in a row, this is the film for you. Do not waste your time. Let me say in its defense, this movie isn't woke garbage. It's just plain garbage. We can have movies about teams of female superheroes taking on a male villain. It's more about usurping male characters or the inherent advantages between the genders being overlooked. They didn't take Spider-Man and make him a chick. It's a completely separate character with her own origin. It's just not very well executed. The women don't throw the male villain around like a rag doll. In fact, they pretty much spend the entire film trying to avoid him. The only thing that may make your eyes roll is that one of the character's fathers was deported. And I guess you could probably say that the three spider girls are all from different races and backgrounds. But that's not the defining characteristics. As I said, it's not woke garbage, it's just plain garbage. And now, onto the spoilers. The movie opens sometime in the past with a lady researching spiders. Apparently these spiders can give you strength, speed, other abilities from their bite. And there's a group of people who are said to live in this forest and travel through the treetops. But this lady is pregnant and has some guy with her who seems to be like a nice guy. She's getting contractions and he's saying, maybe take a rest. But apparently that's a bad thing to do. So he shoots her once she finds the magic spider and runs off with it. Well, I say he runs off with it, but it's more of a light jog. I guess they didn't have enough set for him to really stretch his legs. Luckily, the spider people of the treetops rescue her with some of the most unconvincing CGI humans ever committed to film. They herk and jerk all over the place, like they were animated by selecting two or three keyframes and having a computer fill in the gaps. Liberal use of shaky cam and shooting from behind palm fronds are clearly the solution to embarrassingly bad costumes. Rapid cuts! Rapid cuts will make it look good. They take her to a bathing pool where they make a spider bite her just before she gives birth. Thankfully, the lady doesn't survive. Talk about one of the least likable characters. Why would we ever have any empathy for her? Thanks for the umbrella. Flash forward to 2003 and we get some laughably bad editing. Shots of an ambulance zipping in and out of traffic are interspersed with shots of Dakota Johnson staring blankly out of the windscreen while casually rocking the steering wheel back and forth. All while Adam Scott is in the back treating a patient and barely rocking at all. The latest Taylor Swift album rocked more than this. Unfortunately, they managed to avoid splattering the skateboarder with their ambulance. That looks like one of the spider people from the trailer. Amazing! Cassie gets Uncle Ben's entire life story before they even make it to the hospital. But she still gives you his full name, Ben Parker, just for good measure in case you didn't catch on. Oh, and he's going to his sister's baby shower, so you know he's going to be an uncle. Then a little boy gives them a picture he drew and Cassie doesn't know how to react. Luckily, Uncle Ben knows exactly how to handle kids. Lucky he does, because he's from a mixed race family where the daughter from the previous all-white marriage is ostracized by the new half-Asian family. Hey, that looks like another one of those spider people. What are the odds? I guess the spider strength hasn't kicked in yet as Cassie is so weak that she doesn't even attempt to fold the cardboard. To her, it may as well be carbon steel. The very thought of bending it is so ridiculous as to not even bother thinking about. What are the odds that the uncle of Spider-Man works with Madame Webb, the original Spider-Person? Uh-oh, the evil landlord is harassing that young girl. 
Why should they have to pay the rent that they agreed to pay to stay in the building? Wait a minute, does Cassie live in the same building as another spider person? Oh my god, she managed to fold that cardboard picture that boy drew. Her spider powers must be emerging. But why would you put that in your box of important documents and mementos? I hope you likes the spiders, mum. She goes over the side of a bridge in a car while trying to rescue someone, as we all saw in the previews. And she's in some bizarre underwater web world. I don't know what's going on. I guess this is the signal to the audience that she now has her powers. As far as I can tell, her powers are precognition? Either that or a deja vu. Ben wants her to go to the hospital, but Cassie wants to go watch American Idol. Meanwhile, Mr. Bad Guy, who hasn't aged a bit, is more into the refined things in life, such as the opera. Mr. Bad Guy has a bad dream. He's being robbed by a black spider person. Hey, I didn't write it. Blame the movie. Oh my god, this guy's dialogue. Oh, you don't know the torture of dying over and over again. So the bad guy is having dreams that the three spider people kill him. So that's due to him having been bitten by the magic spider. Is this actually a premonition? Doesn't that kind of justify his hatred for them? Or are his premonitions inaccurate? I can't tell. Oh, so he just shagged her so he could get access to the FBI's database of faces. No, I think he shagged her because he wanted to, because he could have poisoned her before shagging her. As someone who works in IT, I'm a little triggered by a password. It's just numbers and letters. No upper or lower case. No symbols. You should be ashamed. So now he has her password and her ID. Won't the FBI come looking for her if she goes missing? Seems like an extra risky strategy. Ben must have convinced Cassie to come to the baby shower because there she is enjoying an ice cold Pepsi. Whenever I think of Pepsi, I'll think of the same high quality product as Madam Webb. The women are being real cows at this party. No wonder women hate other women if this is what they're like when they get together. Cassie gets deja vu again and stupidly asks, why is everyone repeating everything again? At first I was going to assume that this universe doesn't have deja vu. Kind of like how a lot of cinematic universes don't have zombies, so they're always confused about how to deal with them. But no, she very quickly mentions to Ben that she had deja vu when they get called away to an accident. Cassie's getting more premonitions, but they don't seem to be coming true. This building is meant to be packed with explosives and I was waiting for the big boom, but it never came. Man, this CPR scene just goes on forever repeating snippets of dialogue. Is she supposed to be getting something out of this, or does she need to work on her powers a little more? Even when she has a clear premonition of an accident, she can't prevent it from happening. Seems like a pretty weak superpower. You know it's coming, but you can't do anything about it. <laughs> oh boy, the line delivery in the hacker's scene is so flat. I don't know if it's these actors, or if they were told to act like this, but it's like they're reading an eye test rather than a script. I came from nothing and I won't go back to nothing. That line was flatter than a really flat thing. Jeez, I was wondering why she had an old answering machine that you can screen calls on. Then I remembered this is meant to be set in 2003. Cassie works out that she can change the future when she opens a window and a pigeon flies into her apartment instead of smashing the window. I felt like there had to be a better way to explain it than just have her come out and say it. She gets a train to her colleague's funeral and all of the other spider people are there at the same time. And Mr. Bad too. What fantastic odds. Geez, the flashbacks make these scenes feel 10 times longer because you've already seen them play out three times. It was around this time that I knew I'd made a mistake. I should have stayed home. The sense of space is totally absent in this scene. I don't know if it's due to them breaking the 180 degree rule or if it's all the slowing down and speeding up. I can't tell what direction they're heading. Are they running away from Mr. Bad? Why does he have a black spider suit? Why did the cops try to arrest Cassie? Was it because that girl yelled that she was abducting them? And why is Mr. Bad killing the cops? Let them cuff her, then attack. This movie is seriously wasting your time. A normal movie would show someone entering a stairwell, then exiting at the top. This movie shows you the whole climb, then the look around at the top. We don't need to see this. So they're in New York and a supervillain is trying to murder them. The cops are looking for them because they think she kidnapped three girls. Even though people would have seen the three girls going with her, so why not just go to a police station? The guy with the spider powers who has premonitions of three women dressed as spiders is wondering how they got away because it seems like they knew he was coming. Bro, they have spider powers like you do. So Cassie ditches these three teens in the woods. Not sure why she wouldn't take them back to her place. I guess the movie forgot that she doesn't know that Mr. Bad has access to the cameras. But at least the movie wastes our time again. Instead of showing her leave the forest and then having her open her apartment door, we get her driving through the streets, past cops, parking, 
tearing the number plates off the taxi, climbing the fire escape, and clambering through the window. Totally unnecessary. Is this baby's first film? Okay, Cassie attempting to climb the wall got a mild chuckle out of me. It's just awkward enough that it seems like something she would do. There you go, his name is Ezekiel. Her mum had a photo of them both in a journal and Cassie recognised it. Now go to the cops. Tell them that the guy who killed the cops in the subway was Ezekiel. Here's a photo of him. So the girls are getting hungry in the forest. They reckon they're only a mile from a shop. One of them says that they don't have any money, but one of them does have money. So that's grounds to accuse them of forcing people to do things because they have money. No, she's answering your criticism of the plan to go food on the grounds that you don't have money. They just left the fire burning, not cool. So they go to the diner for a quick bite, but they can't resist the lure of young teenage boys. This is how simple the script is. Something happens and then something else happens. There's no cause and effect. One of the truckers is reading the paper. I'm going to assume this is the old days when papers have the evening edition. Why they couldn't have put it on the TV news, I don't know. The hacker somehow intercepts the police dispatch. This is a pretty amazing system she has. Ezekiel pretends to be a cop and tells dispatch that he's on the scene. And for some reason, he's absolutely revving the guts out of his car. Cassie gets back and realizes the girls are gone. Why don't you have a premonition of that? That's going to be the theme of the film from now on. Why did you have a premonition of A and not of B? They are actually giving table dances. No, I'm not making this up. In a country diner, on the table, dancing for young boys. Even the nerdy one is in on it. How did these stupid girls manage to kill Ezekiel in the first place considering how dumb they are? They're acting like she's mad at them for being promiscuous, but she's mad at them for drawing attention to themselves. It's at this point I no longer care if they die. You can't save stupid. Evil Spider-Man turns up. Where was your premonition about that? But now it seems that she doesn't have premonitions. Now her power is that if she dies, she goes back in time two minutes. Also, Ezekiel seems to have poison touch. I thought he poisoned the FBI agent with something in a drink, but I guess it was by touching her. It also seems like Ezekiel can turn the room upside down, but he stays in the same orientation. So now he's on the ceiling, but he didn't jump up there. It's very confusing. The camera just turns upside down. So this time, Cassie rams her car into Ezekiel as he walks in the door. After stupidly trying to overtake the log truck, and once she does overtake it, she turns in front of it. Why does Cassie even care about these girls? They're not related to her. She just had a vision of them dying. Now she's basically turned into a one-woman wrecking crew. So they can't go to the cops because the nerdy girl's an illegal immigrant whose dad has already been deported. She's already behind on rent. How's that going to work out? My god, there's so many shots of people just looking back and forth between each other. You could cut 10 minutes from this film just by removing these shots. Was this made for streaming because it felt like it was trying to pad out the runtime? Cassie drives back to the diner. Even though it's locked up as a crime scene with the front of the building in rubble, it still has power on. There she has a hallucination of Ezekiel and they have a full-fledged conversation. I don't know if she was imagining this or if she was hallucinating. Or is his poison giving them telepathy? He even explains why he's hunting them. How is this happening? Was it a dream? Did she die and go back in time? Who knows? We get a scene where they take five minutes to learn CPR, so you know there's going to be a scene where they have to take turns doing it to someone. Cassie's off to Peru to see the spider people of the Amazon, so Ben gets lumped with three horny teenage girls. Poor guy. Luckily, he's staying at his sister-in-law's house, so it's all above board. Oh boy. The flat reading when Cassie gets back into the taxi. Wait, why has nobody tracked that stolen taxi down? Can you even leave the country as a wanted kidnapper? Cassie goes back to Peru and immediately finds the location her mum was researching. I guess it's lucky that in the last 30 years a road has been put through with the bus service. Her mum's maps were really good because she found the exact river from one of her photos. She gets a premonition of the spider people and turns around and one of them is right in front of her, but now he's wearing a nice sweater and some chinos. I guess in the last 30 years, the Amazonian spider people got domesticated. So Ezekiel didn't get bitten by the spider he stole, he was cursed. Cursed with superpowers. So this spider person gives her a flashback, and we get to re-watch the first five minutes of the film. So in the flashback, we see that Cassie's mum found out that Cassie has urysomycetosis, and was going to die, so her mum went looking for spiders to cure it. The spider people letting the spider bite her mum saved her. I have no idea why they knew to do that. So old mate tells Cassie that she can be in two places at once. While he's telling her this, if it wasn't for the caustics cast by the water below them, 
I would have assumed the projector broke because she is so still. Oh, and they murder the classic Spider-Man line. It's no longer with great power comes great responsibility. That's now something akin to once you accept responsibility, you will become more powerful. Seems a bit megalomaniacal. Ben's sister-in-law's water breaks, so they have to leave the shelter of their house to go to the hospital. And I guess you can't leave these strange girls alone at your house, so they have to come on the trip to the hospital, and they are sprung. Doesn't help that one of the girls basically has her head out the window for any cameras to pick up. So the stolen, dinged up taxi was allowed to be parked at the airport for like a week, and she can still drive it when she gets back? Can you even get back into the country as a wanted kidnapper? Cassie arrives at, you know what, I'm gonna call Ben's house because Ben's sister-in-law is too cumbersome. He has a vision and luckily the ambulance they called turns up so she can steal that car as well. She's in a lot of trouble when this is over. This is probably the funniest bit of the entire movie. Hacker turns all the lights green so all of the cars crash. I noticed it's New York and no one's leaning out the window yelling, hey I'm driving here. Instead it's polite honking. Anyway, back to the funny bit. Ezekiel is up on a street lamp gazing ominously with a grenade when Cassie somehow manages to drive the ambulance through the back of a Calvin Klein billboard and into the very intersection. Okay, whatever. She has future sight, but she would have sailed right over the top of the mall and landed harmlessly, but Ezekiel, for some reason, jumps up into her ambulance's path and gets splattered. Well, not splattered, but bowled over. He should have just sat there. His grenade rolls under a car, but luckily it's a vertical flame grenade and only shoots flame directly up into the car it rolled under, and not shrapnel into the face of Ezekiel, who was on the ground next to it. Thankfully, the ambulance survived the three-story drop and is good to go with the girls. They charge the defibrillator and use it on the roof of the ambulance when Ezekiel lands on it. They head to the factory from the earlier scene as it's full of explosives. They put flares in crates. Is his vision heat-based? But the fireworks start going off and Cassie says that when I say duck, you duck. They duck and a firework blows a hole in the brick wall. It's all very matter of fact, not epic in the slightest. Now she's predicting flying shrapnel and using a shield to block it, but it's all so ho-hum. She has a premonition that one of the letters on a delicious ice cold Pepsi sign is going to fall off. So all three girls get into trouble and Ezekiel says, you can't save all three. That's when my eyes roll back into my head so hard I could check out my own butt. If only she had super spider powers, I yelled into the empty theatre. Webs pour out of her body and instead of being climactic and awesome, it's dull as her web ghost calmly says, give me a hand, to each of the stricken girls. Ezekiel falcon punches Cassie in the gut and at that point, I'm not sure if she saved the girls or not. Ezekiel then monologues and Cassie says something about the girls aren't your future, they're mine or some garbage. Then the Pepsi sign falls on him. Cassie falls into the ocean and one of the girls dives in to save her. I think she got hit by one of them underwater fireworks. But luckily they all know CPR and can take turns. So they end up in some new penthouse apartment with the four of them living together. How do they afford it? The only adult is blinded in a wheelchair. Is she predicting lottery numbers? The girls also become spider people. How does that happen? They didn't get bitten by spiders. This ending raises more questions than it answers. That was the most painful movie I've sat through in a long time. It's probably worse than either Five Nights at Freddy's or Rebel Moon. I'm going to give Madame Webb a 3 out of 10. It was really bad. It was a bad script, poorly shot, poorly edited, and poorly acted. The amount of dead air while people stared at each other or out of windscreens was incredible. So many scenes of people moving from driving, to parking, to getting out of the car, to walking up to the door, to opening the door. Just cut it all down. Make it a short 90 minutes instead of 120 minutes. It's hyperbole to say that that's X amount of minutes I'm never going to get back, but that's what it, this movie felt like. I've never been in a theatre before and wished I needed to pee so I could get up and walk out. These are some of the most one-dimensional characters. In fact, with the three girls, I'd say they're almost zero dimensional. The motivations of all these characters were so vague. I couldn't understand why Madame Webb was even protecting these girls except to serve the plot. She's already shown how she hates kids and doesn't like socializing. Now she's protecting these kids from a homicidal maniac? No thanks. Her powers changing as the movie went along made it almost painful to follow. I felt like I had motion sickness of the mind. One minute it's premonitions, the next it's being able to rewind time. I hate stuff like that because it means you're never sure what is really happening and what's going to be rewound. 
No wonder poor Dakota Johnson is giving such half-hearted promotional interviews. I'd sack my manager too. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, please consider subscribing. I release reviews occasionally when time allows, and a thumbs up would be a big motivator for further reviews. If you didn't like it, feel free to leave a thumbs down and let me know how I can improve in the comments below. Anyway, I'm Mixie, thanks for your time, and have a good one.